Welcome back. It appears President Trump is now poised to allow oil drilling off the coast of Florida. An announcement could be made at any time, and in the age of this divided government, it is one of the few things that actually unites Democrats and Republicans in the state. I traveled up to Stewart recently to discuss the issue with Republican Congressman Brian Mast, who is one of the president's biggest supporters. One of the things that Florida representatives, Florida senators, governors have been unified in is saying, listen, we don't want drilling off of the coast of Florida, not on the East Coast, not in the Gulf, not off the Florida Keys. Uh, I don't want any rigs off of Jensen Beach or, or Stewart Beach or anywhere else. And this is something that Florida is very, very united in, the representation in Florida, very united in this. President comes down here regularly. Uh, his previous uh, Secretary of Interior, uh, Secretary Zinke, he made the commitment that the there won't be drilling around the state of Florida. There's a new secretary in there now as well. And it's a matter of getting that new secretary up to speed and saying, listen, this is something that the state doesn't want. You know, we're, we're a water state. We're a peninsula. Our waters are our pride and joy. It's why people come here, the water and the weather. And we don't want anything whatsoever to threaten that. And, and you know, as the old saying goes, you know, over my dead body. So. The new interior secretary, though, from what I gather, whether it was Marco Rubio pressing him or others, did not make that commitment. And usually he's most vulnerable before he gets Senate approval. Now he's been approved by the Senate, he's in the position. You know, the fact that he wouldn't commit to banning offshore oil drilling in essence off Florida or take it off the table, does that trouble you? It's something that there's still more conversation to be had about. I'm not super troubled about it at this point because I know that we're engaged in that conversation. We had the commitment from the previous uh, Secretary of the Interior. These conversations are still ongoing with the entire administration. The president is well aware of what Secretary Zinke had made a commitment to before. So yes, it's a piece of the conversation that they haven't committed to this yet, um, but it's something that I wouldn't say that the conversation of it has been negative behind closed doors. For us. The, uh, the, the idea is that if you're going to continue to squeeze Venezuela Venezuela and cut off oil imports from Venezuela and from other countries, you start, you start having a fear, at least the White House may have a fear of rising oil prices, and one way to alleviate that would be to sort of allow permitting for oil drilling off. It, it, is that the tension that, that we're sort of seeing? Do you think that's part of it? It's not just Venezuela. This, this goes long before we were looking at what's going on, you know, with M Maduro and Venezuela. Um, this goes to, you know, we want to see uh, energy resources across the breadth of the United States of America being used, being exported, being created for industry. But that comes with balance. Where do you want to do that and where do you not want to do that? Our state of Florida, we have our own property rights here, our own way of, that we want to see our state managed. That's the one of the most beautiful things about the United States of America. We stand very united in saying, listen, this is not going to be the, you know, the oil capital of the United States of America. This is not what we're looking for here. We want people coming here, you know, fishing, coming here to, you know, see our waterfowl, coming here to see uh, the beauty and the splendor of the state of Florida, the Everglades. We, won't, we don't want to see any drilling going on there. In the Everglades either. We want people coming here for the beauty, and that just doesn't play into that, and so we're going to stand against it. Politically speaking, if the president were to move forward with that plan, do you think he's at greater risk of losing Florida and then for possibly the presidency in 2020? Yes. That's, that's what he has to worry about, is if he allows this, he could, it could endanger his presidency. I would say that that puts Florida certainly at danger. People, citizens across the state of Florida, people that come down to Florida as a second home, people that live in Florida 365 days a year, people that, that work in Florida anywhere in the service industry, people that just want to enjoy the beauty of Florida, they don't want to see drilling in the Everglades, off our uh, Atlantic coast or out in the Gulf. And when you talk about something that unites Florida so much, yes, that is uh, something that puts anybody's political future to go out there uh, at risk to be on the other side, of, to include the president. Okay, let's dig into this a little deeper with my guest, Politico's Mark Caputo. Mark, you heard what the congressman said. Florida Democrats and Republicans are united. What's likely to happen here? Well, you're asking me what's likely to happen with the Trump administration. And that one thing that I can't do is give you the winning lottery ticket numbers or what Donald Trump is going to do next. But it does seem like Trump's administration for a while has wanted to drill for oil off of the eastern Gulf, or better said, off of the the Gulf Shores of Florida. And uh, he's received a certain amount of pushback about it. It wouldn't surprise me that while this is politically toxic in Florida, 
that he doesn't do it before 2020. But after 2020, if President Trump gets reelected, it wouldn't surprise me if they went ahead with a plan. It would surprise me a little more if they went ahead with a plan before 2020, because what was interesting about what Brian Mass said to you when you asked, will this bear a political cost to Donald Trump without missing a beat, Congressman Mass said yes. Would you agree with that analysis, that, that there would be potentially a price to pay in Florida if he moved ahead with it before? Well, I'd agree with the way you, you framed the question. There would potentially be one. Uh, will there definitely be one that will cost Donald Trump Florida? I'm certainly not ready to make that sort of prediction. You know, Florida elections are always really tough to predict anyway. But we do have elections that have razor thin margins historically, and every little thing kind of counts. And this could be one big thing that, within the context of every little thing, could make a big difference. But remember, we heard a lot of talk before 2016 about how the immigration debate and Donald Trump's very let's just say extreme immigration rhetoric was going to cost him the Hispanic vote here and therefore was going to cost him the White House. Well, that didn't happen either. President Trump not only won Florida, he won the White House. It's interesting. In 2018, when Rick Scott was running for Senate, he, there was that very famous moment where Zinke flew down and, and met with him, I think, at the Tallahassee airport and took offshore oil drilling off the table after it seemingly had popped up and gave Rick Scott sort of a, a perceived boost. I'm almost wondering if this is Lucy in the football again. You create the talk of there's going to be potentially offshore oil drilling, and then the president comes in at the last minute and says, no, no, I'm the savior of Florida, and don't worry, I'll protect you, and then everyone cheers Donald Trump for protecting him. That could very well be. That would take a certain amount of coordination and a kind of a desire to have kind of a cohesive narrative. I'm not sure that that's been consistent with the Trump White House MO. What has been generally consistent that we've seen is that they do want to have more oil and gas exploration and the Gulf of Mexico is a great place to do it. And let's not forget that the new Interior Secretary, David Bernhardt, is a former oil and gas lobbyist. So this is sort of his area. And as I, as I noted, the fact that Marco Rubio pressed him for that commitment and couldn't get it, I think is kind of telling in the sense of obviously the Secretary doesn't want to box himself in, but if you're not willing to make that commitment before your approval, before mm -hmm. you get the Senator's vote, it's going to be harder to uh, get that commitment afterwards. It sure is. And for Rick Scott, who did make oil drilling a big issue in his campaign successful against Senator Bill Nelson for him and Rubio to then vote for the new secretary after trying to get these assurances out of him and failing to do it. You do wonder if they are going to bear a certain political price if everything happens the way it we think it might happen. It's interesting because this also comes in the context of the president's budget. Um, and the, the state of Florida had anticipated or had hoped that the president would put in his budget $200 million for Everglades restoration to sort of match the state commitment on Everglades restoration. And it turned out the president only put $60 million in. And it's leaving Republicans in, you know, and Democrats as well in Florida scrambling because it's harder. Because once you set that $60 million limit in the president's budget, it's harder to find the money. Money, you got to sort of play some games to get it. The president has made bold promises about the environment here that the Republicans in Florida, like Scott and Rubio and Brian Mass and others, have, and DeSantis have banked on, but his actions haven't really followed through. Right. Well, there's an old line that the legislative, or better said, the executive proposes and the legislative disposes. So maybe there's only so much stock he could put in a president's budget anyway, considering the House doesn't look like it's going to pass a budget to begin with. But budgets are policy documents. They are documents of values. And so far, the president hasn't valued the Everglades in the way in which Florida politicians of both stripes would want him to. Uh, I do remember the president was down here a short while ago bragging about the, the money and help he had plowed in to do the Herbert Hoover Dyke. So you'll probably see that used as a counterweight to uh, those who say he's shortchanging the Everglades. But let's face it, Everglades restoration has been going on for decades now and really doesn't look like it's moving forward regardless of who the administration is. That is, the federal government's commitment regardless of administration hasn't been so strong as Florida always wanted. We only have a little over a minute or so. You, this is the first time you're back since you've got a new gig within Politico. You're now going to be part of the team covering the 2020 Democratic 
Democratic field. Yeah, there's only about 50, <laughs> 60 candidates. So, it's a... so, so, uh, so, give me a sense for for you know how you go about that. What what are you seeing? Where and where does Florida's? Do you, do you see Florida as still be an integral part of it, or is this Democratic strategy going to be one where it leaves Florida out and they go more to the Midwest? Well, remember Florida in a Democratic primary right now. Florida is only so important because we're going to be kind of in mid March and we're not going to be one of those early states. Those early states are really kind of the killing field for candidates that really kind of winnow down the field majorly. Where Florida is going to be as important as it is always is in the general election. Uh, if you had the 2016 map stay the same, but the Democrats won Florida, they would only need to win one other large Rust Belt state. The Wisconsin, be, Michigan. For instance, Wisconsin is a great point. If Democrats won Florida and won Wisconsin, the Democratic nominee and the rest of the map were to hold the same as it was in 2016, the Democratic nominee would win the Electoral College by one vote. That's how important the state is. And that's all you need. Mark Caputo, well, I'm sure we'll have you back as you're covering this field. Yeah. It'll be fun. Too bad we we don't have more favorite sons from Florida except for Wayne Messam right now to cover. All right. Thank you very much. We'll be right back after the break.